Byte magazine recently said, it would not be an exaggeration to describe the history of the computing industry for the past decade as a massive effort to keep up with Apple. The only problem with Microsoft is they just have no taste. They have absolutely no taste. And, and, and what that means is, I don't mean that in a small way, I mean that in a big way. They, they don't think of original ideas and they don't bring much culture into their product. They have actually broken the law in the way they compete and using their dominance to pressure companies to withdraw products or to slow down development or change development. And I'd like to uh, announce one of our first partnerships today, a very, very meaningful one, and that is one with Microsoft. First part of it is a patent settlement and cross-license. Uh, the two companies have reached a full cross-license for all patents uh, that exist and for patents that are filed within the next five years. Microsoft is committing to release Microsoft Office on Macintosh for the next five years. Next, we have taken a look uh, at browsers out there and Apple has decided Apple has decided to make Internet Explorer its default browser on the Macintosh. No! No! And lastly, Microsoft is making an investment in Apple. Microsoft is buying $150 million worth of Apple stock at market price. It is non-voting shares, and they've agreed... They've agreed not to sell them for at least three years. I went to the clone vendors and I said, guys, we're going to go broke doing this. And if we go down the shitter, the whole ecosystem will go down the shitter and you won't be here either. So we've got to fix this. And we're going to honor our existing licenses. Apple's a very honorable company. And we don't have to extend those licenses. Nothing in our original license ever said we did. So we would be glad to. We love to license software. We'd like to sell you our software. But you've got to pay a fair price for it. Not an exorbitant price, just a fair percentage of the costs. And we outlined what that was. We asked them to do that. I personally asked them to do this. And they basically told me to go pound sand. Being a man of perseverance, I asked five times over the next three weeks. Each time we were told to go pound sand, we finally made the decisions we have to make. When we got to the company a year ago, there were a lot of products. These were the product platforms, 15 product platforms, and a zillion variants of each one. I couldn't even figure this out myself. After about three weeks, uh, I said, how are we going to explain this to others when we don't even know which products to recommend to our friends? 
If we had four great products, that's all we need. And as a matter of fact, if we only had four, we could put the A-team on every single one of them. And if we only had four, we could turn them all every nine months instead of every 18 months. And if we only had four, we could be working on the next generation or two of each one as we're introducing the first generation. So that's what we decided to do, to focus on four great products. We'd like to explain some details that go into Rafsty, which is the new operating system combining the Macintosh OS with the software from Next Software. It's built on the PowerPC processor. The next layer up is the core operating system itself. That's based on the mock microkernel. Built on top of the core OS are two major services. First is the Mac OS compatibility box. Shown on the diagram here is the blue box. Also on top of the core OS is the OpenStep programming model. Shown in our diagram is a yellow box called the OpenStep APIs. Lastly, we should point out the programmer also has access to the Java APIs. So people can write software in Java and also take advantage of the OpenStep system stability that we get through Rhapsody. Now, what was this Rhapsody thing? <clears throat> Rhapsody was some great technology. It ran old apps, i.e. Mac apps, and it would run these new apps that would give you all these great new features. The problem was, when you ran the existing Mac apps under this blue box thing, it, you didn't get any of the new features. And when you, to get the new features, you had to rewrite your entire app. Nobody wanted to do this. And so we came to the conclusion that Rhapsody was great technology, but it didn't give us what we wanted. It was going in the right direction, but it didn't go far enough. And so we decided to go further. A lot of people thought that this was the future of the Mac OS. Apple's been saying this for a few years. It was crazy because the Mac OS has 22 million customers. About double that number of users. It is one of only two high volume operating systems on the planet, and it has 12,000 applications with developers who make their livelihood from it. Far from being something that we should discard, it was very rapidly apparent that this is our crown jewel. It needs to be polished and extended. And it is my great pleasure today to announce our strategy for Mac OS 10.